I'm Luca Ferranti and I will talk about FuzzyLogic.gl with this package which I have written for FuzzyLogic. So, first of all, what is FuzzyLogic? Well, if we think to traditional logic, traditional logic has only true or false, so it's like zero or one. Whereas in fuzzy logic, truth is between zero and one. So with fuzzy logic, we model vagueness. So if vague concept, which is actually how people think, how people behave. So for fuzzy logic, we model concepts like it's hot. What does it mean to be hot? If it's 30 degrees Celsius, yes, it's hot. But then if it's 29, suddenly it's not anymore. And zero degrees is cold, well, I'm from Finland, so not for me, but zero degrees is cold, but then if it's 15 in the middle, is it true or false? So with the fuzzy logic, we have membership functions, so functions from a set to the interval zero and one, which tell us how much something is true. So for example, for the statement, something is hot, we can have this uh, S-shaped membership function, and if it's uh, 30 degrees, yes, it's definitely true, one, if it's uh, 15 degrees, it's 50% true that it's hot. 50%, sorry, true that it's hot. So we have uh, our basic building blocks, uh, these uh, membership functions, then we can combine them with uh, logical operators. And uh, well, in fuzzy logic, logical operators are fuzzy because there's no one way to define like conjunction, disjunction, implications. We have uh, uh, some requirements, for example, for conjunction, for end, we want a function which is called the t-norm. And there I have a few examples of t-norms. So minimum, product, or Lukasiewicz. They are the most common ones. But basically, we have a pool, a plethora of options to define how we define the end, how we define the or, and so on and so on. So that's like modeler choice, how to define that. And uh, after we have done that, we can start talking about fuzzy inference system. So what is a fuzzy inference system? In the simple words, is a function which has uh, some input variables and uses uh, some fuzzy rules, uh, some rules to determine an output, which can use, be used, for example, for decision making. So if you want to decide based on your inputs uh, how to control a machine or how much tip to give uh, and so on. So let's, uh, oh, nice slide. Let's see nice, now a simple example. So this is kind of the hello world of uh, fuzzy logic. This is a tipper system. So I want to decide, based on the quality of the service and the quality of the food, how much tip to give. And in the package fuzzylogic.gl, I have this domain-specific language to define fuzzy systems. So it's kind of fuzzy programming, if you like. So we have this at mumfis macro, which is to build a mumdan inference system. Then we have tipper called, takes a service of food as input and computes the tip as output. Then uh, for uh, each uh, membership function, uh, sorry, for each variable, we define the membership functions. So service is poor, can be good, can be excellent. And for the food, uh, similarly, ranchy, delicious, uh, and so on and so on. And then we write uh, the rules. So we have that if the service is poor or the food is ranchy, then the tip is cheap. If the service is good, then the tip is average, and so on. So that's the idea of fuzzy logic, that I write rules with words. So effectively, I do computations with words. If the service is poor or the food is ranchid, then the tip is cheap, which is how humans work, uh, how humans think, but now on a computer. Uh, yep. Then, uh, uh, so that's probably not clear, the previous code. So in the package, uh, you can plot the inference system, so just to plot this, and it has plotting recipe, so visualize it. So we see now we have uh, the rules and the plot of the membership functions. So if the service is poor, so close to zero, tipper is ranched, close to zero, then the tip is cheap, so around one, two, whatever. And uh, once I've constructed this uh, fuzzy inference system, so this object this, I can actually call it as a function, so I can do this of service equal to and food equal three, and it will compute the tip, like what is according to those rules, the appropriate tip. Yeah. Let's see now a nicer example. So I got this idea today while I was working in front of the Julia Hub stand. So suppose we have an inverted pendulum, so a pendulum on a cart, on a car, and we want to balance it. We want to like keep it in equilibrium. Without doing anything, 
if I poke the pendulum, it will uh, start uh, to like uh, have a harmonic motion, as you know, so it will start like moving and uh, spinning around and around uh, the pendulum. Now uh, we want to define a controller for that, so to keep uh, the pendulum in vertical position using fuzzy logic. And uh, the cool thing uh, is that uh, we can do it uh, with uh, very little maths, with uh, just intuition. So what is our intuition? That uh, if the angle is negative, so I will uh, want to poke the cart in the negative direction to balance it. Similarly, if it's positive, I poke in positive direction to balance it. And so that's what I encode here. I define my variables, theta and delta theta, so angle and uh, angular velocity. And if it's negative, so if uh, theta is negative, the force will be negative medium. If the angular velocity is negative, then the force will be negative large. This is a very simple controller. Please don't use it in industry, just a proof of concept. But you can get the idea that uh, modeler can use their experience, their human understanding, to define a fuzzy controller. So they know that if the angle is negative, the force has to be negative. And we write it this way, so basically in words. And then we can simulate it. So that was actually pretty nice because it was pretty plug and play with differential equations.gl. So when I have the force, I just add uh, my fist uh, here. And then we see it works pretty well. So it keeps the angle like to zero, so the pendulum stays uh, like vertical. Now this is not perfect because for example, the cart will start moving. So you probably want to also like balance angle and position. Yep. Then uh, to conclude quickly, some other features. Maybe sometimes uh, if you, for example, think to embedded applications, you want, don't want to run my package on embedded applications. So actually with the package, you can generate a standalone Julia code, like optimized Julia code and throw away my library and it will still work. So once you have tuned your funny model, your fuzzy model, you can uh, generate standalone code. It, uh, it can read the standard industry, like uh, MATLAB standard. So if you have worked in MATLAB, doing fuzzy logic in MATLAB, you can reuse your old codes and you can just read it out of the box. And yeah, as future work also, like learning fuzzy models from data automatically, graphical user interface and generate the C code. Thank you for listening. And uh, if you have any questions, please ask. Also later, but um, I mean mainly because I wanted to, uh, because I was teaching a class in fuzzy systems, uh, and so I wasn't uh, very happy with MATLAB interface, uh, and I wanted to write something different. And also, like in MATLAB, you know, you use strings uh, to select the algorithms, and I had this idea that in Julia would be nice because you can parameterize the fuzzy system by the type of the algorithm. And so at compile time, you can already choose what algorithm to use. And then at runtime, you don't have any branches. So you already know like what algorithms it uses. So it was a nice plus. And also, Julia allows me to write domain-specific languages with macros. So yeah. Um, I haven't tried yet, but uh, maybe we can try. If you have an application in mind of how to compose it, it would be fun to try. Yeah. The, the, I mean, uh, popular application is in control theory, so like autonomous vehicles, autonomous objects. In uh, image processing has also been used for like image denoising. Uh, in decision making and in general like uh, knowledge based uh, systems. So these are like those main applications. <laughs>